Okay. Down the left side are the consonants, and across the top are the vowels. We will do the consonants first. Um, I'll give you the stroke patterns. Um, I wouldn't say they're terribly important. Um, down the road when you're trying to read a uh, Korean person's writing, um, it can be, it's not messy, but it's, it's almost like cursive, um, and trying to sort of distinguish which one is which, which letter is what, um, then the stroke patterns will start to sort of come in handy, but um, it won't be often, it's not that useful, uh, but we'll give it to you anyways. <clears throat> the first one is the G. The stroke pattern is across the left and down. Okay? Without lifting your pen or pencil, just one stroke. Okay? Across and down. For all intents and purposes, this is the G. Uh, to say a little bit more about that, um, there will be times when it is more of a soft K sound and a hard G. Okay? Uh, this doesn't make a lot of sense right now, um, but it will down the road, and every time we see it, uh, I'll sort of mention it. Um, one example of this is the city Kwangju, okay? which used to be spelt with a K. And then, around the time of the World Cup, they changed it to this spelling. Okay? Um, it used to be a K, now it's a G. Just kind of signifies that neither one is actually correct. Um, you know, neither one, it's, it's, it's in that middle ground somewhere. Um, that being said, you know, this is sort of background stuff and we'll perfect our pronunciation as we go. For now, for simplicity's sake, just remember it's a G. Okay, go home when you're studying it, just remember G. Because for the most part, uh, it will be a G. Uh, it will be just a regular G. Uh, and there will be, a lot of times, rules governing when it goes to the K. Um, and we'll certainly talk about those, and I'll point them out whenever we come across them. Okay. Next one is the N. Down and across. Okay. Again, one stroke without lifting your pen or pencil. Okay. This is the N. Okay. Uh, no funny business about this, this one, no hard and soft business, just a regular N. The next one, stroke across, down and across, okay? First stroke is across, second one, down and across, okay? This is the D, okay? Uh, this one, like the G, has this soft hard business, okay? So, So it'll have, it'll occasionally be a soft T and a hard G, okay, it'll be in that middle ground. Uh, and the city that represents the example for this is Daegu. Okay, the city Daegu used to be spelled with a T and then around the same time they change it to a D, okay, just showing that it's kind of in that middle ground, okay. Next one. Next one down is the Lille. The first stroke is across and then a small tick down. Okay, one stroke, across and down. The next stroke, left to right, joining the middle, and then down and across. Okay, so you're basically you're making a G across and then an N. Okay, first stroke, second stroke, third stroke. Okay. Uh, a little bit about this one. Um, there are two cases for this. The first case, it is 
what I describe as a flick of the tongue. Okay. Uh, in books and signs, when you see this written phonetically in English, it's written as an R. But they don't have an R. We don't have a sound that we can associate with this. So R is sort of what they've accepted as the closest thing. Uh, but what it is, is a flick of the tongue. And I'll give you an example now. Um, this, we haven't learned yet, what is the M? This one with the tick downwards is the vowel U, okay? And then in the bottom, we have this, okay? So this together would be MUL, MUL, okay? Now, the next, this is one block, okay? A block basically is a syllable, which we'll get into more in a bit. Um, Let's put another block next to it. Again, we haven't learned these sounds yet, but we will in a few minutes. This circle is a silent, when it's in this first position, is silent, okay? This is the E, okay? So this would be mul E, okay? Now, in this case, this is silent. This consonant down here will come up and fill that space. And in this case, this is when this leel will be a flick of the tongue. So we won't say mul i, we'll say muri, muri. Okay, it's got that flick, li, muri. Okay? <coughs> um, and the counter example of that, okay, is the time when it is a true L. Okay? Uh, there are times when it will just sound exactly like an L. And I'll show you that situation now. So let's take our mul again. If you see this kind of scribble, this is my quick way of writing the L. Okay? Mul. And then, where in this block we had the silent ian, okay, the silent consonant, here we have another L. Okay? And this is the situation when you have an L in the final position of a block here. And then in the first position of the next block, this will combine to make a true L sound. So where this one was muri, muri with the flick, this one is muli, muli, okay, true L. Uh, again, um, every time we see this during our readings, okay, I'll make sure we'll point it out, we'll practice it, okay? <clears throat> The next one.